what will become a long run of short video articles and one ever expanding one on our website is what I will call the Games Tech Encyclopedia. And as I've had many, many requests from you guys and girls to help you understand and learn the descriptions, terms and meanings of many words or terminology that I use throughout my videos and analysis. Really, the Gaming Encyclopedia Handbook of sorts. Now this will help you gain a better understanding and by breaking into segments means that using it as a reference will be much easier along with less to take on board at once. Referring back to this as needed will also be much simpler. So to be sure, bookmark the site page for updates and also add the playlist to your favourites. And to be really sure, why not subscribe to never miss out on new content first. So a perfect place to start is in the ever-changing world of anti-aliasing, a subject near and dear to many hearts and eyes, and now becoming much better and advanced as I predicted at the start of this generation. Now far more important than resolution alone, but it can still be full of acronyms, double talk and confusion. Here I'll break down the key areas and most popular methods used. Please note that as in many cases, algorithms and methods can change from team to team and title to title etc but this should cover you all for the fundamentals and how you determine an FXAA from a AAA. So let's clean things up with part one of a long running series starting with an overview of what this all actually is. AA or anti-aliasing is any means in which an image or more precisely frequency issues are smoothed or improved to reduce the contrast or aliasing between two frequencies or pixels in this case, meaning when they become near indistinguishable from the other, which happens when something is sampled. Now these anti-techniques try to remove or at the very least reduce these errors. They incorporate many methods and the best solutions will use more than one, of which the main ones are below and really fall into three core categories. I must stress this is a high level overview, not the video to go in depth on these techniques. PPAA is post-processing anti-aliasing. Now these are methods that run after all or most of the scene is rendered, i.e. are of the screen space variety and tend to have the smallest budget cost in render time. They effectively look to clean up the still image or frame right before you see it on screen and are predominantly handled by the GPU, although the PS3's SPUs did get wheeled out much during its life to help out in just such cases as this. Another difference would have been the Xbox 360, for example, but due to its ED RAM, used to tile a lot of its resource. Therefore, not every method available to the PS3, for example, was possible on the Xbox 360. Now, the overall method is, and its very base, very simple. It aims to detect luminance values, brightness, close to edges, and thus smooth out or blur them to improve the IQ and reduce the noise. Now this is very simplified here but works, and the methods really differ on how they detect and blur. Remember, as a post solution, its main benefits are it covers everything from geometry, texture shaders, but predominantly prior to the UI or on-screen display, and is by and large much cheaper, see faster, than other rendering dependent options. It also can be quick to plug into pretty much all pipelines due to its uniform use. Main examples are... FXAA, Fast Approximate Anti-Aliasing. Now this was developed by Timothy Lotz when at NVIDIA and became one of the most popular forms of AA last gen and much of the start of this one. It looks to detect the contrast between two pixels and if a high luminance is found, it applies its smoothing process over the edges. Like all others, it does get more expensive the higher the resolution as it has more pixels to scan obviously. Its benefits are speed, memory size, ease of use in all games including deferred renderers and can be run in a pixel shader that makes it compatible with more hardware unlike MLAA, which started life requiring a compute shader. Now it does have various levels of coverage and sampling that can be chosen by the program. Game examples that use it are things like Watch Dogs, Deus Ex Human Revolution, many more titles have versions of it, and PC titles regularly have it as an option. Ah! Oh, Jesus, no! MLAA, Morphological Anti-Aliasing, is again a post-AA solution and has various methods developed by Intel, AMD and Sony's own ATG department. Now this differs from FXAA, originally designed to run on CPUs, and rather than identify pixels, it looks for a pattern of pixels and determines the form, hence the name. It tends to handle sub-pixel elements better than FXAA and determines errors of issue and then smooth them accordingly. Aside this, they are both have various levels of sharpness, filtering, etc., and they can be tailored by the developer. 
It is more expensive than FXA to run with similar results, but both have the benefit of being lighter than other solutions and more flexible on engine use. Now, God of War from SSM is one of the best examples of the techniques on consoles, along with Guerrilla's Killzone 3, using the PS3's SPUs and costing around 3 to 4 milliseconds per frame. Money well spent. SMAA, Subpixel Morphological Anti-Aliasing, was a joint creation from Jorge Jimenez, Jose Echeverria, Diego Gutierrez, and then Crytek's Tiago Souza, recently improved and used in the new Doom reboot. Its aims are to combine the form of analysis of MLAA along with a super sampled element, covered later, in addition to temporal reprojection of the previous and current pixel. It improves on all aspects while incorporating a super sampled or multi sampled element, improved edge detection, less global blur, and is still a post solution, delivering as good or better results than MSAA or EQAA for a lower cost. Now, it must be stressed that not all these benefits appear in all forms, as they have a few from SMAA 1 times, S2, T2, and 4 times, this being the best, and its newest iteration of TSSAA times 8, which was used in Doom. It first appeared in Crisis 2, then 3, and helped Rise look so good on the Xbox One's launch. Second Sun also received much praise, including myself, of its use on the PS4 at launch of SMA T2X. It must be stressed that this solution is not as far and forget as the other two, and is normally incorporated within compute shaders and the game engine far more symbiotically. This is, I feel, the single best post AA to date, and I hope it receives more use or the base for future works. Now moving on from post solutions to the next step and much simpler, in super sampling. SSAA, super sampling AA which increases the samples per pixel. MSAA and EQAA are forms of this, along with indeed simply rendering the image at a much higher resolution and then displaying it on the monitor if it can or down sampling into a smaller buffer. This is what driver panels on AMD or NVIDIA with their VSR or DSR choices respectively. Along with being a key benefit with the forthcoming PS Pro, using this for many titles downsampled to a 1080 image with the forthcoming Second Sun patch having this added in, in addition to native HDR output. Now this is the most expensive form of it, as everything is rendered at a higher level, sample rate using more bandwidth, memory and resource. A simple but costly solution commonly used in offline CGI, like movies. MSAA, multi-sampled anti-aliasing. Now this method uses hardware acceleration and detects polygon edges, thus reducing its cost over SSAA. Due to the fact that less pixels need to be sampled and the pixel shader is invoked less frequently and more efficiently when it is. It can use multiple sample patterns and can have varying levels of coverage. It takes either point samples or area samples collected from primitives only and takes the colour, stencil and depth info, Z, which can be improved if hardware compression exists. It can deliver better results for less cost than simple SSAA, but it does not really improve textures or alpha effects as it is concerned with geometry only, aside these falling within its sample points. It does not perform well with deferred renderers and like EQAA, they have to form part of your rendering pipeline and as such are all factored in early on. It is quite an expensive solution and uses quite a lot of resource and memory bandwidth along with memory itself. EQAA Enhanced Quality AA is AMD's take on MSAA also known as CSAA. This allows multiple geometry, coverage and colour samples at a sub-pixel level e.g super sampling like MSAA, but it improves it further by increasing the coverage samples with the same Z stencil and colour for a far more accurate result. Now modern consoles have this in hardware and allow developers to use programmable or stochastic sample patterns to improve results further. By using this information they can weight the resulting pixel colour more accurately from the improved sub-pixel samples. And last but not least, and in fact the newest and soon to become the most popular among many teams I am sure, TAA, 
Now, this stands for a vast variety of temporal anti-aliasing solutions that are becoming more commonly used and adapted this generation. Now, all the methods we've just covered are what's known as spatial aliasing, the distortion between two vertices or points in space. The next issue, and the biggest issue really that you see in video games, i.e. moving video images, is that of a temporal solution, and that is between one image and the next, or at least a pixel moving from one place to another. Now these are all formed part of the solution and not the entire basis, as I mentioned at the start. TXAA, no more by NVIDIA's own solution, but can also be used to describe TAA itself. Now both are temporal AA solutions that are described in more detail. TSSAA, Temporal Super Sampling, widely known and much loved by me is Tiago Souza's incredibly clean and low artifact solution. As above, this incorporates multiple elements and is an extension of SMAA, already covered. On its own, a temporal solution has to cover both static images as they are created and the blend or temporal data between frames as the game moves. Now on to all of the others, and as such we are just at the cusp of these implemented into games. Now using PBR materials within its specular elements among other areas means that a temporally stable solution is really required. Now right now the best example of this is Ready at Dawn's work from Matt Patinio with the Order 1886. Now this combined composite texture work, meaning multiple layers put together, MSAA or EQAA edge sampling along with a temporal solution that carried motion vectors of movement, colour sampling and reprojecting the old pixels new location that are efficiently blended between frames, resulting in one of the most stable and noise free images in real time rendering. I am impressed with it now and the team's complete asset and engine work as a whole as I was at launch, which you can learn more about with my as then detailed in depth analysis. But other teams are starting to use temporal solutions. One such title is the largely unappreciated and unloved but mightily impressive Black Ops 3 from Treyarch. The team, title and franchise as a whole always tend to push brave new techniques in game development. Not only from high asset quality, effects like temporal anti-aliasing and superb motion blur, or within incredibly frugal frame budgets and obviously high frame rates, this is even more impressive on fixed hardware. And again, they always seem to deliver, and all teams do this. Again, it looks true with what we're going to see with Infinite Warfare and the remastered version later this year. This will include a further enhanced version on the PS4 Pro and of course PC later this year. Now none of these techniques should be confused with the checkerboard rendering solution that the PS4 Pro is going to offer up and obviously deliver a native 4K display. Remember, this is not upscaling but instead an internal solution using the information some of which I've just covered already to generate a final 4K output even if every pixel is not rendered individually as you would normally expect. But I will cover this in more depth in another video as it's not really in keeping with the AA solutions we're talking about here, including the temporal one we are ending on. Obviously, Uncharted 4 implemented its own method and it worked incredibly well, hiding most of the artifacts at the expected cost of slight image clarity and sharpness, but again, this is the trade you'd expect for CGI-like IQ, and again, this will see an enhanced and improved version on PS4 Pro which may go above and beyond what we already expect of the IQ improvements. Now I hope you found this useful and the information will serve as a good basis for you on AA methods and issues along with a reference point for future articles and discussion. Now please leave your thoughts below on whether you found this too complicated, too in depth or just too much information in one go. I am trying to break these down into simple areas but I do want to make sure that I cover the key aspects of each section as I talk about it. I've tried to give you clean and easy examples and I must stress this is a high level overview of how these solutions work but it should be used and could be used as a basis. But please as always leave your thoughts and feedback below. If you did enjoy this or anything else that I've put together please like and subscribe to support the channel and my future work. Please share where appropriate, play fast, play hard and I'll see you on the next one. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, Sally. Oh, shit. At least I got the door open, though, huh? <laughs> That's one way to do it. You all right? Uh, I don't know yet. You? Deaf? Come on. Let's see what Avery has in store for us.